Hey team, I'm Greg, and this is Studio 214. Are you like me? Is this how your musical instruments look? Well team, guess what? That's a big fat no-go. No worries. Here's a solution. On the cheap, too. To keep expenses down, I'm going to use Pine. I use Procreate to draw out my plan and the dimensions. That piece will be at the top and hold the guitar necks in place. I finalize the measurements and then change them where appropriate. I mean, who wants a 29 inch cut? I usually measure the board before I start any project, just to be sure my calculations are going to work with the boards I actually have. This one's 8 feet, and that's just fine. I take that 8 foot board and mark off two sections of 3 feet each for the sides of the rack. I measure a 5 inch piece and cut it. It's for the top of the rack, the piece that cradles the necks. I need three 30 inch by 3 inch boards for the guitars to rest on. After measuring, I rip them out. I need to be even, so I measure out 30 inches and get the ripping. Uno. Dos. Trace. I also cut two more pieces just in case I need more support. I got the wood, so why not? Now time to make that top piece for the necks. Your plans and needs may vary. I've got two electrics, a PRS and a Strat, one bass, which is a five string, and an acoustic. So plan according to your gear. I gave the three solid body instruments two and a half inches of space for their necks, and then three inches of breathing room. The hollow body got eight inches of standoff with the same two and a half inches of neck space. I'm gonna make them three inches deep so that my guitars will sit into the rack. It's more secure. I use a jigsaw and do the best I can. <laughs> I do the best I can. Hey, that's better. I use the blade to mill a groove so that I can then do a straighter cut. It wasn't a good idea. Luckily, foam will cover most of this, but still, be careful. I'm clamping my level to my two end pieces and making them even, at least with each other. That's for both sides. 
My circular saw has a one and a quarter inch standoff between its guide and the blade, so I make sure that the clamp is even so that I can make a straight, sexy cut. I measure five inches out and five inches up. Then use my level again as a guide for my circular saw. Now it's time to sand. Here are my grits. Anything above 220 is a bonus. I hate sanding. Seriously, it sucks. But you gotta chooch through it. But I don't gotta bore y'all with it. So just know that each piece went to 320, so it's nice and smooth. piece of scrap wood. That will make a great guide for my supports at the bottom. Put that in a safe place for later. Find a way to make clamping those guys work. If you get one side, you're good. No shame at Justin Fire and reapplying them clampies. Clamp's got a clamp. And I got a drill! I'm in the habit of drilling pilot holes now these days because I've done split way too many boards. And it isn't a big deal. Just just do it too. I also always countersink because nobody wants snail's head sticking out and jacking it up. You, sh you should just do it too. You know, I'm not trying to tell you what to do, but seriously, do it. Now, I don't have a fancy drill bit that routes out a countersink while it drills. Just I just took the screw I was using, found a drill that was slightly larger. Then after drilling the pilot hole, I would switch out the bit and get down with screwing down. Too easy. And here is where we're at so far. My guitars didn't want to rest on just one board at the bottom, and well, it's fine. So I could use some reinforcing. So I'm gonna go ahead and knock out screwing in that second piece. And then of course, counter-seeking the screws. Do it! Now it's time for a necessary evil. I have a pedal board that I made that is the same color. I actually used a hardwood for it because I am going to be standing on the damn thing on stage and I can't have it buckle. Anyways, to make it match the other wood pieces in my man cave, I got to stain it. Be careful, man. This is some nasty shit. It's bad stuff, seriously. Use precautions and follow the instructions. Guys, seriously, this 
This nasty shit. It will spontaneously combust. Or so the warning says. Goes without saying. Don't put it in any of your holes. And you'll be good. If you do, send pictures. Anyway, be careful of the dreaded splatter. Just like special time. Smooth strokes. Unless you're into the rough stuff. <laughs> if you are, again, send pictures. Here she is! Ooh! It's a lady. Seriously, team. This is some nasty fucking shit. Be careful with it, bit. It's tough. The whole backside of the can is a warning. And I quote, Use in an open field. It just has an LOL next to what to do if you swallow it. Having said that, spread it on. Rubber window sealer with an adhesive backing. And here is the most expensive knife in the world. Seriously. The only way you may wield this knife is by giving it five more years of your damn life. Measure it, cut it to fit, press down, repeat. Save some for the bottom. Finish this project off with some rubber feet so my floors stay sexy. Pay no attention to the parts I missed. Do me a favor and don't even bring it up. Well, team, that's all there is to it. Here's my cave where my guitars dwell. Yeah, I'm gonna call it Jin. Because it has a sexy rack and it is a sturdy girl. One guitar, two guitar, three guitar, four! Well, team, that's all for now. Thanks for watching this special edition guitar rack episode. If you like this type of thing, let me know. I was thinking about building another pedal board and possibly a few guitars. It's a music channel, so it fits. Anyway, I make a fool of myself on my painting channel. Check it out, Studio 214. Please have a listen to some of my sick tracks. I'm especially proud of Fugit, a dark cantata. It's super fun. It's on the channel. Check out the other videos. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already. As for me, I'm going to the house. For Studio 214, I'm Greg. See you next time.